And then yeah. we decide how safely to get the rover over there most efficiently and, and safely. And then we build a sequence of text commands understanding, based on those 5,000 knobs that we turn, what is that command actually going to do? And then we hit go, and then the rover does its thing. And the intelligence that's built into the rover is that of you send it that command, and if it's receiving data that it thinks it's in danger, it stops itself. Correct. Or cor uh, it autonomously avoids the obstacles. So it can actually change its course. Exactly. So the, the big command that we have is called the go to command. Yeah. So we like say, here's your target, go there. Uh, and it will, like I said, every meter stop and evaluate the terrain. And it has this optimization algorithm. So it, eva it evaluates the train based on slope, roughness, and obstacle height. And then it waits, it, it kind of integrates the path along that map of what we call goodness. So if the goodness is, you know, 255, then that means it's good. If the goodness is zero, it means it's untraversable. And you kind of take the, the distance that you're driving and integrate it over all of those goodness cells in that map. It says, well, that's below my threshold score. I should actually go here, or I should go here. And it tries to find the optimum path, kind of maximizing safety and ability to reach the goal that you've given it. And what we do here in the Mars yard is you can see these rocks set up. So we just did a test the other day. We put the rover here. We said, your goal is on the other side of the Mars yard. Get there. And we put all these rocks. So it basically forced the rover up this hill and then it tried to drive the rover off the cliff. And then the rover saw the cliff and it correctly came down and then kind of, you know, if it were just doing everything blind, it would just point to it and go. But there's a big set of rocks and a big cliff. So it correctly avoided all of that and made it to its goal. That's what we do in the Mars yard is we test both the, the hardware capability to say, how steep the slopes can you drive up? How big the rocks can you drive over? And we test the software saying, is the autonomy doing the right thing? Are the images looking good? Is it building the correct map? Are we able to get the visual odometry? That's why we have these tracking targets. So we're characterizing the accuracy of visual odometry and all these other features. Does it get smarter as it goes? Does it learn from its that mistakes? Is a, that is, is a that great question. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's actually a very good question. I've never had that before. But as from the robotics community, we are attempting to do that. So the first version of software there's actually a few different versions of software that we're writing. It's landing on a version of software, and on about Sol 5, we're going to uplink you know, version 2.0, a new version of software that has much more capability. And we didn't want to uplink it early in the risk that there'd be some bug that would screw up the entry, descent, and landing code. There's no need, you know, we're not going to drive until yes, Sol 6, simple, so keep it simple. And then once you get on the surface, get rid of all that EDL code, because we're not going to land again, uh, so you've got more room for kind of the mobility stuff. So that code has basically autonomy that we tune the knobs for. And we are in development for how do we take real data and the results of our slip estimates and then have the rover automatically tune those knobs. So that's in development. It's not going to be there for a little bit, but it's something that we're actively working on is how does the rover learn from its experiences to turn its own parameter knobs.